Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Dandot Pranar Maharaj. Dandabad Pranams. Okay, can we begin? Uh, I need to please accept my humble obeisances. Sorry? Please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj. Oh, okay, please accept my obeisances. Okay. All glories to Prabhupada. So, are you translating today? Yes, Maharaj, I'm translating today. Okay. Okay. Omma Jnana Timarandasya Jnananjana Lakaya Chaksuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandiham Shri Guru Shri Yatapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakalitam Scha he Krishna Karana Sindhu Dhinna Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Namao Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So now is the inauspicious month of Purushottam Mass. Inauspicious for all kinds of material activities, but very auspicious for devotional service. Right. This month is very good to increase our hearing and chanting, to do more service for Krishna, to hear more about Krishna. Many devotees are reciting auspicious prayers like ch ch Chaurastika and, and uh, other Nice prayers glorifying Lord Krishna. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, other places they're uh, reciting every day the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, which is of course Purushottam Yoga. So, yeah. so for the Purushottam mantra, we want to increase, take the opportunity to try to increase our bhakti. How to increase our bhakti? We have to simply decrease our material activities. We have to give up the material activities and take up the spiritual activities. Material activities means those which are all around our mind and senses, giving pleasure to the senses, the body. And spiritual activities are those which are centered around Krishna. In the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada talks about the weakness of the heart, that this is a problem, why we have material attachment. Weak, weakness of the heart. This Durya Bhavyam, Durya Asa Krishna, Ridaya Durya the weakness of the heart. That, that we have strong attachment to material things, to the things in relation to the body. Because we are conditioned souls, remember in the 15th chapter Lord Krishna describes there are two natures, there's the, the Nitya Mukta and the Nitya Bada, the eternally liberated and the eternally conditioned. Nitya Mukta souls, they don't have that problem of the weakness of the heart. They're fully de dedicated to Krishna. So in the script in the scriptures we, we read how to become a liberated soul. Ihayashya Haryadashi Karmana Manasagira. When we use the body, the mind and the words in the service of Krishna, that is the liberated soul. Some people think, oh, we have to wait till we leave the body before we can become liberated. But that's not necessary. We can be liberated now, in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. 
But we have to take, we have to keep ourselves engaged in spiritual activities. We have to keep ourselves busy hearing and chanting. So it's very wonderful seeing all the, all, all the activities which are going on all over the world at this time. So many parts of the world, all the devotees are having different programs to increase the hearing and chanting. The devotees in Nigeria are putting on this big program for Purushottam month. Every day they're having so many people speak to them, give classes from the scriptures. They want to increase the bhakti. Here in Mayapur, although there's a COVID, still one devotee organized a Harinam Sankirtan. And a big group of about 50 devotees all got together, they went for Harinam Sankirtan. So there's so many nice examples from the devotee community. We need to take the inspiration from the example of the devotees. Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita, Yadiyada chariti shrestas tattad evetarajana. Whatever actions are per performed by the, the leaders, by the respected people, then other people will follow their example. So, third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna was explaining about working without attachment to the results, and he was describing how great souls work like that. And then Krishna gave examples. He said, kings like Janaka, Maharaj Janak, he had so much, he was a king, but he was giving so much charity to everyone. He was so, he was so pious, so righteous. <laughs> And because he was so pious, that's why Mother Sita came as his daughter. He got the best child. And that daughter, of course, became the what? The wife of Lord Ramachandra. So Krishna gave Maharaj Janaka as an example, then he gave another example. He said, he said, he himself works without considering the results, without being attached to the results. He performs his duty. So 
So everyone has to recognize they have a duty. We say Swadharma, the constitutional position of everyone. We have our own Swadharma. Somebody's Swadharma is like that as a, a businessman, somebody is a worker, someone else, the woman is a housewife. We cannot give up doing our duty. And the duty of a devotee is on the spiritual platform. Jivarsvarupahaya Nitya Krishna Das, that our constitutional position is to serve Krishna. We have to serve Krishna in all conditions without considering happiness or distress. We simply do our duty for Krishna. Some, sometimes devotees think that, oh, because I'm serving Krishna, I should get rewarded for that. We, are, we expect to get some material gain, but there's no guarantee. We just, a devotee doesn't think about what he will get. He just simply wants to serve Krishna. The devotee likes to give everything to Krishna. That is surrender, where we give up all everything for the service of Krishna. So Lord Krishna teaches, of course, in the Bhagavad Gita, how we have to surrender. That surrender means just simply taking shelter of Krishna, not considering our own position but just simply we want to take, to surrender, to submit fully to Krishna. So that surrender begins with accepting everything which is favorable for Krishna meaning hearing and chanting. The devotee likes to utilize their time every day to chant the holy name and to hear the pastimes of Lord Krishna. When Lord Chaitanya was residing in Mayapur, he told the devotees, he said, let's stop sleeping at night. We will meet in the evenings and have kirtan every night. We, won't need, we don't need to sleep because it's just a waste of time. This is the mood of the Goswamis. They conquered over eating and sleeping. And they were always humble about it. They were not proud. So 
कॉमनली उनको इंडियन वाइफ के माने खाना क्या देने में क्या देने होते हैं हमें तो आके हम करता हूँ मटेरियल हम तो हम तो मटेरियल लाइफ इस बेस्ड ऑन दिस फोर थिंग्स ईटिंग स्लीपिंग मेटिंग एंड डिफेंडिंग हमारे बहुत ही जीवन से क्या मानें बहुत बहुत सारा होता है कि जो चार उत्तर जीवन में खाने खाने अन्य आपके आप पता बने अन्य संभव बने अन्य बहुत से जगह आए आपने ऐसा बोला तो श्रील प्रभु पर सेड व्हेन ही वाज अ यंग मैन He gave up mating and defending. Then he said, in his old age, he also gave up eating and sleeping. He spent his time writing his books. He would wake up. He would take a little rest in the evening. Get up in the middle of the night and begin translation. Yeah, he did not worry about eating and sleeping and mating and defending. That's for the body. Those activities are all around the body. Of course, we are not so advanced that we can come to that platform so easily. Therefore, we eat prasada. But don't don't eat more. Just eat what is necessary to keep you healthy. And similarly, sleeping. Don't sleep more. Just sleep enough to keep the body healthy. So we want to use the body, use this, this body which is made of senses, in the service of Krishna. All of our senses can be used for Krishna's service. This is the meaning of devotional service. Rishi Kesha, Rishi Kena Sevanam Bhakti Uchate. Devotional service is to use the senses in the service of the the master of the senses. Krishna is Rishikesh. He is the proprietor of the senses. These this body, these senses belong to Krishna. They're meant to be used in his service. We learn from the spiritual teachers how to use the senses in the service of Krishna. The spiritual teachers will engage us. They will teach. They will tell us, chant the holy name, chant at least sixteen rounds every day. They will tell us, read the books, read the Srimad Bhagavatam, hear the message of Krishna. Mm -hmm. 
They will tell us and they will also show us by their own example. Just like Lord Chaitanya, although he is Krishna himself, he would hear every day Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Chaitanya would go to see Gadarhar Pandit and Gadarhar Pandit would read Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Chaitanya liked to hear the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj and the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj. And when he's not hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, then Lord Chaitanya liked to have Sankirtan and they'd have everyone come and they would have big kirtan and everyone would take part in the chanting of the holy name. His Holiness, His Holiness Lokana Swami just organi he organizes a program every year called the Holy Name Week. Srila Prabhupada went to America. He arrived in America on September the 17th in the year 1966. So Lokana Swami took that date, September 17th. He said that's the first day of the Holy Name Week every year. And so for one week, beginning September 17th, they have a full week's program with a lot of kirtan. And he, he was encouraging the different devotees around the world to organize special kirtans and to organize uh, satsang and to organize Harinam Sankirtan in commemoration of the arrival of Srila Prabhupada in the Western country. Of course, people may say, oh, I'm very busy, I have so many things to do. We have to understand what is our real need, what is most important in the world. We have to understand the real need is Krishna consciousness. Everything else is useless at the time of death if we're not Krishna conscious. Yeah, at the time of death, at the time of leaving the body, then nothing else is important except our spiritual condition, the condition of our soul. So we are all preparing for that moment. We, we, we say just like 
that we have a final exam. Somebody you go to, sometimes you go to college and you study there and at the end of the course they have an exam. So similarly we have also our exam at the end of this life. So we want to be in that condition at the end of life that we can think of Krishna, we can chant the holy name. And if we're not able to th think of Krishna at the end of life, if we've used our life in the service of Krishna, then Krishna will think of us. So Krishna is a person, he reciprocates with his devotees, he's called Bhakta Vatsala. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, as we surrender, I reward you accordingly. If you think of Krishna 10 minutes a day, Krishna will think of you 12 minutes a day. If you think of Krishna 12 hours a day, Krishna will think of you 15 hours a day. And if you think of Krishna 24 hours a day, Krishna will think of you 36 hours a day. No, so we're never the loser by going to Krishna. It's the best investment. In material world, people are always thinking how to invest, how to get more money, how to get, make their money grow. But we should think how to make our bhakti grow. So bhakti is also, it's a, it's a plant, you see. The spiritual master plants the seed of devotion. Brahmanda Brahmite Kunya Bhagavan Jeev Guru Krishna Prasadi Poi Bhakti Lata Beach. Bhakti Lata Beach. Uh, you see, we are living entities and we are going through many different universes called Brahmanandas. Brahmanandas, and we are taking birth many times. And when we are very fortunate, then we get the, the seed of devotion. Uh, sorry, Maharaj, I couldn't hear properly. Can you repeat once more time for me? Yes, uh, I said the living entity is moving through many different bodies in different places in different universes. Um, and when we are very fortunate, we contact the spiritual teacher and he gives us the seed of devotion. 
अनि जब हामीले पुरा 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 भाग्य माने सौभाग्यशाली हुन्छौँ त्यतिखेर हामीलाई एकजना शुद्ध गुरुको कन्ट्र्याक्ट मिल्छ अनि जसले चाहिँ हामीलाई यो भक्ति रूपी बिउलाई भित्र रोकिदिनु हुन्छ अनि so this this is very this is very fortunate if in material world every living entity has a mother and father the 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 dog has a mother and father the cat has a mother and father yes ta hamro yo bhautik chhari matate ko mata pita hunu hunchha jase ki hamro hamro pani mata pita hunchha pita ko usko pani aapne mata pita chhan but those who are fortunate they have got guru and by grace of guru they get krishna ani jo bhagya chali chan unhe usne dekho unchanta hola theri guru hunta guru ko karan mein nahi krishna mein so the guru gives the seed of devotion and we have to take care of the seed so that it grows otevaro guru ne the yo bhakti rupi Just like if you're keeping Tosi in your home, you have to sometimes water her. You cannot just leave her dry all day. And you have you have to also pull out the weed when some weeds grow there you have to recognize what is a weed and what is the tosi i have to tulu tiko podama alag alag chhare ru unin san tapi kena tapai to chhare lai nikalera pikhnu parcha chhala tulu tima tapai antar pani jani parcha so the path of devotional service is like a gardener like a gardener somebody taking care of plants in the garden you have to water them carefully and you have to protect them ani yo bhakti ko rasta ke kasto cha bhanda keri jasto ki mali bhanne cha ni hamile to suleru garden ma suleru to banaune suleru lai pani halne na teste khalko ho ani hamile pani tyo hamro pada rokera ani tesma pani halu halu Sometimes even wild animals may come in the garden. You may even get the mad elephant coming in the garden. So you have to protect the plants from all of these things. We want we want the creeper of devotion to grow nicely, and it has to grow, has to grow all the way up to the spiritual world. We don't want to get attracted to the heavenly planets. Although everything looks very nice in heaven and the heavenly planets very beautiful very opulent we shouldn't be attracted there Ani maathi jane ra sama hame yo swarga lok hero ma hamile asakti rakhnu hunna hame la kati ramro lagla ya alag alag chiz le hame la atashit garla tara hamile te chiz hero ma atashit hune hunna we have to go on past heaven go out of the universe into the spiritual sky and go to the highest planet go to goloka ani hamile to koshish garnu parcha koshish gare yo brahmanda dekhin bahir nikhinu parcha brahmanda dekhin bahir nikhera adhyatmik jagat ma hamile gusnu gusnu parcha ani adhyatmik jagat dekhin pani ase sabse bhanda jo maathi ko lok cha jo ki goloka cha puno koshish garnu We have to take shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord of Goloka, Lord Sri Krishna. And that plant, that creeper of devotion, has to produce some fruit, and then some. It will produce some flowers, and it will produce also some fruit. 
And that fruit, that is Krishna Prem. So the goal of life is to develop Krishna Prem, not just to become rich man, not just to become a famous man, not just to become a family man, we have to develop love for God. So there are always so many distractions on the path back home, back to Godhead. We have to re resist all these attractions. To come to, to develop that love for God, we have to recognize there's a process. There's a process by which we practice bhakti yoga. And the, the process begins with faith. In the beginning we have faith. Just like you may say, oh yes, I believe Lord Krishna, oh yes, I am Hindu, oh yes, I have, I like this. So that faith may be there from your birth or it may be something which you come, which comes in your life due to some contact, some friends, they meet you and they convince you. So that faith brings us into the association with devotees. Faith brings us to the devotees, brings us into the association of devotees. And when, when we're with devotees, they will teach us how to do devotional service. They may say, we're going to go for Harinam Sankirtan today. You can also join. They may say, we need you to help in the kitchen, to do cutting vegetables and clean, wash the pots. They may say we need you to get some flowers and make a flower garland for Krishna. Or they may simply give you the bead bag and say, look, here's the japa bag and we want you to do this japa, chant japa every day. So this is the activity of devotional service. 
So when we are doing these things and following the four principles and chanting sixteen rounds, if we are doing them for some time, then we may be able to get initiation. Initiation is where we make a commitment to faithfully chant and to regularly study the books and to worship Krishna. The initiation is important. You need to have that connection with a bona fide spiritual teacher. Without initiation, you may become an animal in your next life. So, after getting initiation, and then we continue to chant and to do more service, the result is we, we start to purify the heart, we get rid of the dirty things in the heart. I was explaining about the weakness of the heart, the Ritayabdurpoyam. And then Asat Krishna, interest in things which are not in relation to Krishna. Uh, we're interested in politics or we're interested in sports, we're interested in movies. They have no connection to Krishna consciousness. They, they simply cover the heart and stop our devotion from awakening. And then other times we're, we're thinking that we are the proprietor, we're thinking this belongs to me. Mm, this is my money, this is my property, my family. It's all for my enjoyment. So we have to get rid of all of these things from the heart. And the way to get rid of them from the heart, the, the process is through hearing and chanting and serving Krishna, surrendering to Krishna. Yeah, we have to get rid of the false ego, the ahankar which is keeping us in material life. So this is the stage of anartha nivritti and this is a very difficult stage of bhakti yoga.
this stage takes some time to go through, to get rid of all the things from the heart. Of course, some people are very pure. They may get through the stage very quickly. Maybe from previous lives they have already cleaned a lot of the heart. And the result of getting rid of all the anarthas, all the dirty things from the heart, the result is then we come to the stage of nishta, where we become very steady and fixed in our Krishna consciousness. Just like Raghunath Das Goswami. Do you know Raghunath Das Goswami? He was staying there in Radha Kund. He was a disciple of Lord Chaitanya. So, it said he followed the regulative principles of sadhana bhakti just like lines on the stone. Lines on the stone, you know, you cannot move the lines on the stone. They don't move, they don't change. So Raghunath Das was doing devotional service like that all, all his life. So that's nishta, where you're very fixed. Just like I remember one devotee, uh, Jai Advaita Swami. So he was not well. One time he was not well. But he wanted to come to Mongo Arti, so he came crawling on the ground. Hmm. So like that, he, he did not want to miss the Mongol Arti. He was so, so attached. Mm -hmm. And then after Nishta, then comes Ruchi, where you have taste. Just like sometimes, you, you know, the deity worship may be very simple. They may only have little, small gornitai. They don't have big deities. It's not very beautiful. But you see the deity there and you know, this is the, the Lord himself. This is wonderful. And you feel ecstasy. <laughs> Or you may have kirtan, and the devotee cannot play madanga, and they cannot play kartal, and they don't sing very nicely, but you think, oh, wonderful, kirtan, they're chanting the holy name, very nice. I mean, 
So a very strong taste, that is ruchi. And after ruchi comes asakti. Asakti means detachment from all the material. Just simply attached to Krishna and Krishna's service. And then comes bhava. Bhava means devotional service in ecstasy. And bhava is the, the, the beginning of prema, mulita prema, love of God, the goal of life. And so that we want to develop our love for Krishna, we have to be patient, we have to go through the process, we have to be hearing and chanting, we have to be endeavouring. So, we may wonder, is it worth it? Is it worth all the trouble? Maybe I won't be successful. But Krishna describes, if you, even if you're not successful, if you just do a little devotional service, can save you from the greatest danger. In the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes about the fate of the unsuccessful yogi. It says somebody may have practiced yoga for a, only a short time, so they're not successful. He said when they give up the body, they will go to higher planets and they will enjoy a lot of opulence there. And then when they come back to this world, they will take birth in a wealthy family and they'll have the opportunity to become again Krishna conscious. And somebody practiced Krishna consciousness or yoga for a long time, but still somehow not successful. So they will take birth in the family of devotees. Just like Srila Prabhupada was born in a family of devotees. And Prabhupada said his spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, was also born in a family of devotees. So that birth is very, very rare, very special. And 
because from the very beginning of life they have the opportunity to cultivate Krishna consciousness. So those of you who have children, you should understand it's a great responsibility that these children are very special souls and you should do your best to help them to become Krishna conscious. Okay, are there any questions? Anybody? Anybody has any questions? Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Guruji. Ah, mere ko aur questions hai. Aaj hi. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Dhanyavad pranam. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Dhanyavad pranam. Hamar le bhakti, madad bhakti maayega mein lagya ra. Aap toh kahan jati 10 baar se baar ya 15 baar se baar ya 20 baar se baar. Par abhi hamar le anarthan nivritti hu na ko lagi bhot cost baar se. Usko lagi kya kya saadana kar ra? Kunchu saral upaya. Uh, Maharaj, uh, Prabhuji is asking, he has been serving for like 10-15 uh, years, but you know, to come come out of that stage of anatta nivriti, it's taking a lot of time and, and he's not having like, clearly he doesn't know what to do, so is there any process? Yeah, is there any process to come out of anatta nivriti? Yeah, the process is just to increase and intensify your sadhana, to do more hearing and chanting, become more absorbed in this service. We have to understand we've been in the material world a very, very long time. We're eternally conditioned souls. We're nitya badas, eternally conditioned. But that eternally conditioned soul can become an eternally liberated soul by doing proper sadhana. We just have to be very determined that we're not going to give up, we're not going to stop our devotional service. Material energy is very difficult to overcome, but if we surrender to Krishna, then we can easily do it. So we have to cry for Krishna, we have to, Gorgovinda Maharaj used to say like that, they said we, we want, he wants to encourage, the, train the devotees that they will cry for Krishna. When we feel so helpless, when we feel so miserable being in this material energy, we just want to get out. 
then we will cry to Krishna, Krishna, please save me, please take me out of this place. So this is a, this is what it takes to get freed of the material energy. We have to really, really want to get out. We cannot just think, well, you know, what can I do? I'm in this. No, you have to, you, we have to really think, I have to get out, I have to get out. And so Krishna can free us. We just have to take shelter of his holy name and his spiritual teachings and we can cross over this ocean of material existence. It is said the ocean of material existence becomes like a tiny drop of water, like the water in the hoofprint of a calf. So you don't need a boat to cross over the hoop print of a calf. So when we surrender to Krishna, the ocean of material existence will become very insignificant. But that surrender has to be constant. It cannot be one week we want to surrender, the next week, well, I'm having a good time this week, it's not so bad. You know, we have to really, really want every moment to get out of this material world. So devotional service, ahaitakiya pratihata, ahaitaki, unmotiv unmotivated and uninterrupted. So we can do it, we can get out, we have, we have the perfect process. And in the past many great souls have crossed over, they've got free of the material energy. It worked for them, the same process can work for us. So we have to really hold on to Krishna, hold on to the lotus feet of Krishna. And when we're very sincere, very determined, and Krishna is convinced we've had enough of the material world, then he will make all arrangements to take us out. So you just have to keep going, you have to show Krishna you're really sincere and you really want to get out. So, 
तपाईँ एकदम सही तरिकाले गर्दै हुनुहुन्छ तपाईँको भक्ति अनि तपाईँलाई साँच्चिकै नै यहाँदेखि निस्किन एकदमै मन छ भन्ने देखाउनुहुन्छ So when Krishna comes riding on the back of Garuda, you have to be ready to go with him. Just like Tukaram, Tukaram was there and the, then the Vishnu aeroplane came from Vaikuntha and they told him, get in, get in the aeroplane. And he got, they told his wife, get in, his wife wouldn't get in, she wouldn't go. Anyway, Tukaram went, he left his wife. So you ready you ready to go? Wife or no wife? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Any other question? Are you keep pressing the chat at the line? There is no Maharaj. Maharaj, there is one question. Yeah. There is no Maharaj. When I was young, when I was seven years old, I invite Kanji Maharaj from you at the wedding. I have one question, so I speak in Nibali. I am a leader of the world. I a question asked by Govind Prabhu. He is asking that at this time of COVID situation and we don't have any um, chances of going to temple and we don't have any uh, chance to meet any devotee or take association. Uh, possible that we stay at home, do service and do our deity worship and do everything at home, do the uh, devotional service at home and can you progress from this, Maharaj? She's asking. Well, certainly, definitely, devotional service is absolute. It doesn't depend on just being in the temple. Uh, mm, devotional service can be performed any time and place. It doesn't depend on any physical conditions. Not that you have to be in the temple. What, what's important is our devotion, our consciousness. We have to do everything with love and devotion for Krishna. Haridas Thakur was living in Jagannath Puri and he couldn't go in the temple because he was from a Muslim family, so he couldn't go in the temple of Jagannath, but he used to sit on the beach. So Haridas Thakur was there and he was chanting the holy name every day and Lord Chaitanya would come to visit him and bring him prasadam. So just going to the temple, that's not so important. Your home is a temple. And even if you don't have a home, if, you're, if you have no family, you may be alone, but still you can worship Krishna in your mind. 
अभी अब तब को घर छेन अब एक्ल होने तब भगवान लाई आप मन में पूजा कर सकते There was the one man. He had no paraphernalia. He had no deity. He had nothing to worship Krishna with, but he was worshiping Krishna in his mind. In his mind, every day he would collect water from the holy rivers and he bring it to bathe the deity. And in his mind, he would dress the deity, he'd put on nice clothes, and then he'd met, have a flower garland, a beautiful flower garland, all in his mind to offer to Krishna. And then in his mind he would cook for Krishna. Because he had no kitchen, he had no boga, he had no fire, he had no 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 bed, nothing. But in his mind he would cook a feast for Krishna. So in his mind he got some of the best cows and he got the best milk, the most creamy milk and he had that milk and then he got some of the very good rice and he was making the sweet rice for Krishna. So then in his mind he was cooking the rice. You have to cook the rice in the milk, it takes a long time. The milk boils and you have to stir it. You have to keep stirring so it doesn't burn on the bottom. Then he wanted to offer the rice to Krishna, the sweet rice. He wants to offer it. But it should not be too hot because if the if the sweet rice it should be cool to offer to Krishna. I remember one temple I was in, we used to cook sweet rice. And we would cook for the Sunday feast and we would cook the sweet rice on Thursday and we would cook a, a big, big, huge pot, many pots of, of uh, milk and, and we would put it all in the freezer on Thursday and leave it there till Sunday. Because when it's colder, then more delicious. <laughs> so this man was meditating about the sweet rice. And then he put his finger to see if the, the sweet rice is cool or not, and he burned his finger. So Krishna was watching him. 
And Krishna laughed when he saw the man burn his finger. So Krishna brought that man back home, back to Godhead. So, are you ready to go back to Godhead? Yes, Maharaj, I'm ready for it. <laughs> you ready to burn your fingers? <laughs> Very good. Very good. Very nice. Okay, any other question? pronouns. Anybody else has a question? Okay. No more questions tonight? Uh, I think so, Maharaj. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, I think so, Prasnasha. Huh? Okay. Okay, we'll finish here. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay, Jai. Go back to Vrinda Ki. Jai. Burma Yatra Ki Jai. 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 Go back to Vrinda Ki. Thank you so much, Thank you.